Hello, welcome back to Everyman Prepping. And today I want to talk about China increasing their war preparations. We're going to go over three things that I think will show how they're picking up steam in their uh, preparation for war with Taiwan and maybe the United States. We're going to talk about the uh, incursions and how often they're, they're happening and, and the number of planes. We're going to talk about their, just today announced, their increase uh, of their oil imports and their increased gold buying. And as we go through this, uh, these articles coming up, uh, as we do that, please like this video and subscribe, ring that bell if you haven't done so already, and share as well. All those things are uh, very important. They really help out the channel, and I really appreciate it. Moving on here to the first article, we're gonna, like I said, we're going to talk about the incursions. And if you remember, before Russia, you know, before February of last year, before Russia invaded uh, Ukraine, they did tons of drills. They did dr drills in Belarus. They did drills in Russia, right along the border. And then they even pulled their troops back at one point. People were saying, oh, they're just drills. They're not going to invade. Well, China watched all that. China knows what, you know, what they did. And they're just not drills. You don't do drills like this right next to the country that you're having issues with or you want to retake or you want to reclaim and do nothing. So let's look here. It says, Taiwan you know, condemns China for the latest combat drills near the island. Taiwan condemned China on Monday for holding its second military combat drills around the island in less than a month, with the Defense Minist uh, Ministry saying it detected 57 Chinese aircraft. Uh, China was saying that this is in response to the United States um, uh, uh, sailing a, a Navy, na naval ship through the Straits of Taiwan. Um, you know, they don't like that. They think it belongs to them. And in response to that, they say they're doing these drills. I just think that is an excuse they're using to practice their invasion of Taiwan. Of course, as it says here, that they even put out, you know, from China that they were focused on land strikes and sea assaults. Well, why do you focus on land strikes and sea assaults unless that's what you're going to do? Uh, the Defense Ministry said that over, over the previous 24 hours, this is the Taiwan Defense Ministry, they detected 57 Chinese aircraft and four naval ve vessels operating around the island, including 28 aircraft that flew into Taiwan's air defense zone. Air defense zone is, of course, further out than the 12 mile international border, but it's a zone that all countries have where they get a little nervous when enemy aircraft and planes get into those areas. It said some of those 28 that crossed the median line of the Taiwan Straits, it's the unofficial buffer between the two sides. They uh, were, um, some of them were SU 30s and J 16 fighters, uh, while two nuclear capable bombers also flew south of Taiwan. You know, very powerful equipment. You know, as you probe, probe these items, you're going to show off your best wares. You're going to threaten. That's what they're doing. Uh, in China, similar exercises last month, they flew 43 aircraft and crossed the median line as well. And let's go to another one here. China's warplanes incursion into Taiwan air defense zone doubled in 2022. And we're going to, I'm going to talk about my theory as to why, you know, they're ramping it up here in a second. Let's go through and see the numbers. China sent 1,727 planes into Taiwan's air defense zone in 2022. That compares to 960 in 2021 and 380 in 2020. So there was almost a, a tripling between 2020 and 2021 and basically a doubling between last, uh, 2021 and 22 last year. So they're really ramping it up. Uh, so what, do you, you know, what they're doing is they're probing. They're probing air defense zones. They're tiring out the response of the Taiwanese Air Force. They're wearing them down. And uh, as you know, if, if you're going to, if you're, a, let's say, a, a thief, a robber, you're going to, you know, probe the, uh, the shop you're going to rob. You're going to go see what defenses they have. You're going to test them out, see how they respond. Test them out, see how they respond. Eventually, you're going to test them out, get, and they're going to think it's enough false responses that they might ignore their motion detectors, their alarms, whatever. So, you know, I think China's wearing down the Taiwanese. They want to get them to a point where they're complacent, that it happens so often that when it's really go time, Taiwan's not really going to react. They're just going to think it's another drill. So I think that's what China's main you know, process here in this is just wearing them down, getting them used to it. Normalcy bias takes over. And then when it's really go time, they're very lax to day school, the Taiwanese and the response. It says here also that fighter jet sorties more than doubled from 538 in 2021 to well over 1,200. Uh, so it's picking up a lot. And then it says that, just like I said, you know, by point out, they're trying to wear out the Chinese. It says, military analysts say China has used the incursions to probe Taiwan's defenses, like I just said, and exhaust its aging air force. You know, you want to wear it down. The more that Taiwan has to fly its planes up, 
the more maintenance you have to do, the more parts wear out. Maybe, you know, planes go down. You know, it's a, it's a nutrition battle. And so that's what's going on with the incursion. Now let's move on now to oil. It just came out today that China signals that it's surging oil demand with a 20% increase in imports. Uh, China's the largest importer out there and they want more oil. So why do you need more oil? Well, yeah, they, they're going to say, well, we're going to get through this, uh, the vid thing here and we're going to, you know, turn on our economy. So we need it. I think you're stockpiling for war preparations. You need to have a stockpile of oil because once, some, once they kick it off, there's going to be sanctions put on and there's not going to be that many more imports. You're probably only going to get oil from Russia um, after that and maybe some, a few other countries, some of the stand countries, you know, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, some of the stand countries will also send it as well, but the rest of the world won't ship them oil. Um, you probably get Venezuela to do it too for that matter, but there's going to be a big oil cutoff and they know this, so they need to stockpile. I think that's what they're doing here. So let's read a little bit. It says, China issued a substantial increase in its crude import quotas for the year. The clearest sign yet that Chinese refiners are set for a material increase in output. Yeah, they're going to need a lot of fuel to conduct a war. Now, like I said, this is all my opinion, what I think is going on, you know, you know, for the war preparations. You know, if you have different opinions, you think something else is going on, put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what everybody else thinks about these three items we're talking about. Uh, let's see, going on. So it raises the total this year by 20%. It says that takes the total for this year to 131 million tons, up from 109 million tons in 2022. Uh, like I said, China is the world's largest importer, um, and it's allocating these 2023 quotas. I think what China, when they allocate a quota, that means the state-run refineries are authorized to go import this oil. But they're issuing them earlier than usual. Well, if you want to attack someone, you need to get this stuff done, so... And that'd be time when they, when they see early in oral, what I've read also is if you're going to attack across the Taiwan Straits, March to April is the time you want to do it if, in the beginning of the year, in October at the end of the year. It's when the, the seas are calmer, you can get across them easier, you don't have to worry about losing as many naval vessels. So March to April seems to be a good time. They're ramping up a lot of stuff. Kind of goes ahead in hand, we'll see. And that goes into my third point here. China's buying gold like crazy. They're, you know, a lot of central banks are doing it. China's the biggest one out there, and they're stockpiling gold because, once again, when you go to war, what happened? Well, Russia found out that the, all the other central banks across the world put on sanctions. They're holding all their money hostage, all the reserve currency and gold that Russia had in other countries and other banks. They're, they're holding them hostage. They won't give it back to them. In fact, Ukraine's asking for it, and some countries are threatening to take it just to steal that money. It is Russia's money, and they're saying, well, we're going to use it for operations. We're going to use it for other stuff. So China sees this. They have foreign currency. They have foreign stuff. They you know that stuff could disappear. So what do you do? You buy gold and you stockpile it in your country because you're going to back your money with gold. So you still have value in it and people will still want to trade with you because you have your own basic you know, money backed by gold. So I think that's what they're doing. So they're basically starting to hoard gold. So let's see what they've done lately here. For the second straight month... Um, they, they bought uh, million, uh, tons of gold, and we're going to go through it. And it's the first reported purchase in more than three years. Let's see. Uh, the People's Bank of China raised its holdings by 30 tons in December. This was after 32 tons in November, uh, bringing to about 2,000 tons total. It's a huge input. Um, central banks across the world, about 400 tons. China's a big purchaser, and it says below here that Mark watchers think Russia could be the other. And why is that? Because, well, all of other Russia's currencies are being held by their banks. They want to stabilize the, uh, the ruble, so they're being, going back to gold standard either. You know who's not buying tons of gold? The United States. They are not buying tons of gold. They can't even prove the gold, the gold they have on hand is what we really have. So keep that in mind about our own situation here. Let's touch on this. Look at this. This is a zero hedge, but this is a chart of when China at least reported their gold increases. You can see here, April 2009, what happened there? Financial crisis. They want to stop back up their economy. They bought gold. Next one, 2015, another huge increase. What happened there? Well, we had Donald Trump elected. There was a lot of turmoil, a lot of China, uh, U.S. trade negotiations. Stockpile gold then, show up your economy. Next one, the big vid, the big pandemic. A lot of world stuff happened in the world. Buy more gold. And now we have another increase happening. So expect something else to happen. It always seems to happen in the world of what's going on. So that's an indicator for me that something's about ready to happen is China is hoarding gold once again. 
And then let's move on to one, this last thing I want to talk about here um, that goes along with the, the gold buying and their war preparations. So this is an article talking about uh, uh, Russia and China working together, uh, exchanging uh, uh, goods in gold and yuan. It says, establishing a, gold, a golden yuan and petrol yuan. And I just want to point out, it says, as Russia buys gold uh, with its oil reserves, it attempts to create a de facto gold and yuan peg. Our point is, law follows the economic practice. If enough people use something, it becomes the standard. Um, and then what, what that means, that this guy's saying, is if enough people use gold or the yuan to buy oil, that's going to be the new standard, the new reserve. And can you know, it says here, the yuan has a characteristics of a reserve currency. And the bottom line, Russia is buying gold and swapping some of it for yuan for trade and reserve diversification. It's that simple. The yuan is, in turn, is implicitly backed by gold and would be a reserve currency, which is what the U.S. would, uh, what the U.S. fears the most is losing the reserve currency. So, uh, in summary, let's go back to what we had. We had uh, increasing oil imports because you need a ton of oil to fight a war, and you know that's ramping up right now. Increasing your gold because you're shoring up your economy. In the history, every time China's done that, something's happened in the world. And you need, to, you need to fund your war. So they're stockpiling gold once again. And then we have all these Taiwan incursions, practices, drills around Taiwan, increasing, doubling from last year, triples, quadruple over years before that. And we've seen that recent history. When a country does that, starts ramping it up, thought something's going to happen. So that's why... I think that we're basically that the war preparations for China is on, you know, uh, hyperdrive going forward, and we need to keep our eyes on from March to April when the seas calm down and something might happen. So what does this mean for you? Keep prepping what you're doing. Prep for yourself and your family. Uh, once a war does break out, uh, which I think it will between those countries, all trade will stop. Everything you get from China is going to stop. The you know inflation is going to spike. Things are scarce need it before then. So I so want to get this news out there. Some of my thoughts might happen. So you can just keep prepping, see why you need to do it, share this with your family members so that they can get on board, your friends, so they can start doing it as well. So there's not as many people relying on you know, people like us to help them out when it does happen. So if you have anything you want to add, please write it down below. And until next time, keep your ear to the ground, head on a swivel. Mm -hmm.